Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and today a very cool training in which we're going to be creating an Excel appointment schedule that is completely dynamic that can accept uh, multiple appointments uh, for a single day and any number of months and years. It's completely dynamic. So I'm very excited to show that to you today and uh, how we went about it with the formulas, formats, and techniques as well as the coding of how this is all done. So stay with us. It's going to be an epic training. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. This Excel scheduler is incredibly uh, dynamic in which uh, we can create a, a fully customized appointment schedule and we can schedule any appointment simply by typing in the name of the appointment and then uh, that's automatically saved to the schedule. We can go to the next month and then go back and have that information appear as well. And as well, we have the ability to give the user a different start days. We can start this on Sunday, uh, start the week on Monday, Tuesday, or Saturday. We can uh, change the start time as well. Uh, we can also change the interval too. Uh, so uh, if we were going to go ahead and change uh, to 15 minute intervals or we can change it to one hour intervals and uh, we can also change the scheduled year as well okay so let's go ahead and get started and show you how this is done all right in this particular training we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about named ranges and those named ranges such as uh, months right or weekdays okay and those are used throughout our formulas and they're really really important here because they really help us with our formulas and they, they help us to code faster as well so we're going to show you how those name ranges are used both in formulas and in VBA coding so that we can rapidly create accurate code that helps us uh, get our products to market and to the customer as quick as possible Okay, so let's get started. So first we have to define uh, multiple types of name ranges. And if you look in the formulas and named ranges here, you're going to see several. Uh, in fact, let's say there's so 10 or so named ranges, maybe 11, uh, of what we created. So let's go ahead and go over those so we can start to define of how we make the foundation of this application. Okay, and first of all, I've created a list of months. This is a very simple months, and um, to do that, uh, I've created that. And remember, in uh, in Excel, we can do that simply by uh, just clicking and dragging down. Okay, so it's very simple, just like that. All we have to do is start out with the beginning, and then I've gone ahead and created. And then when I've highlighted this, right, all I did was enter the months here. So you could just type in months, right if your name is not ranged and that'll that'll define it. And I've done the same thing with days as well, right? Start off with just a single day typing it in, right? Double clicking. Oh, that's too far. Okay, let's go down to back to Saturday, okay? And that's it and highlight that and I've already defined it for you, but you could also highlight the whole and then type in weekdays, okay? So we've gone over months and weekdays. Um, also if you want to change the name, it's not going to change here, okay? I don't I don't believe so it's not gonna if you do want to change the names you'll need to go into formula named ranges and then go into here and then click edit and then you can edit the name here okay if you want to change the names you have to do it from the name branch okay and uh, so we've got months we've got days we've also have times and now what I have did is I've created a, a times and I want to give the user the ability to add in a start time, right? And I, I want to include basically all times at 15 minute intervals. Okay, so to find this list, I've created a time list, okay? And I've started at 12 a.m. and then the next one's at 12.15 and 12.30. So the, quickly, a way to quickly uh, create that is just simply by, let's go ahead and delete that, simply by uh, highlighting this and then extending this down as well. So that, that's where, I'm, and the format, let's go ahead and take a look at the format that we use, because in Excel, the format is not inherent. We'll have to set that as a time format. Clicking here, time, and that's going to include the seconds. I don't want to include the seconds, so I'll go ahead and click on more number formats. And then I'll go ahead and find the time that I want without the seconds. So we're going to use this. If you're on military time, you'll probably want to select this. Okay, so if, you, if we were to select this, you'll see that changes it to military time, but we don't want that. So, 
Okay, so we've got times defined, and if you'll control, shift, down arrow, it'll highlight all the times, and you see times has been set, okay? So that's helpful for defining our times. So we've got times. And now intervals. Let's go ahead and take a look at how did I get. I want intervals, right? Because I want to be able to the user to set how often this schedule. And I want them to change be able to change that within a specific uh, range. I want to have that in a dynamic list here. Okay? So 15, 30, and 1. Those are the times that I want. Now how did I create that? Well, we know, right, that a day is one, right? In Excel, one is a day, okay? So that means that one hour is one day divided by 24, okay? If one day divided by 24, that's the number of hours. And it's basically a decimal format, right? And I've reformatted it. So if we take off that format, right? and we go back to general we'll see it's really a decimal right but in excel we have to change those to a time format okay so remember one is a full day so anything less than a full day is going to be a decimal number okay less than zero okay so it's important that we know that so to get to one and now of course to get to 30 you could do it in, a, in several different ways it could be one divided by 48 or we could simply divide b25 divided by two which is this one here divided by two and then 15 minutes is this one one hour divided by four so I've chosen to show you that and then I've named those ranges when we highlight those we'll uh, call those intervals okay so those are intervals and then next up we have the let's go ahead and center that so I'll make it clear for you and uh, let's go ahead and center this one so that's also clear and back down to just one row okay and I want to I want to make sure those are very clear so that how we've uh, highlighted those. So I'll go ahead and darken those a little bit so we can see those column headers a little bit differently, and that's clear. Okay. And then the same thing with you. I've just listed a bunch of years, and then I've gone ahead and named that range years. And now to create that drop down list, all we need to do is go into the data fields here, data, go into data validation and then click on data validation and then we just always select list right and then we select weekdays and this is the, remember this is the same thing if we were to if it's the same thing as doing this okay but automatically you see how weekdays comes up because we've already named that range but if we were to change it and extend it it would be back right so you see it knows Excel knows that when we have selected the exact name range it's gonna automatically put in so you can highlight that or you can also type in weekdays okay and then and then to check to make sure tab out tab back in okay tab back in and you'll could see the dancing ants around that that shows you that you've got the right data selected so that's a great way to verify your work and I've basically gone through the same process for the start times and through the intervals which we just discussed and the years so this enables us to quickly set up now how did we go ahead and create this calendar well why don't we go ahead and take a look okay now because our first day is dynamic remember our first day is dynamic weekday start here if we were to put Monday right Monday okay so p4 I this is equal to p4 so simply this is a link to this right here okay so now how do we create Tuesday now the reason is we can't just assume that it's going to be we can't assume that it's the next day right because if it's if this is going to be Saturday then we need to go back up so basically we've said I just created a simple form that says if D4 is Saturday then make this Sunday okay if it's not then what we're going to do is we're going to index weekdays so weekdays right you know is this you see the green weekdays it's already highlighted match okay what I want to do is match I want to match Monday I want to find Monday right where's Monday okay and then I want to drop it down one more so I want to find Monday where is it right what row is it on and then I'm gonna add one because I want Tuesday right so that's all we have to do using index match is very powerful let me go over that once again we're gonna index weekdays that means we want to find something within this weekdays okay so with index we need to find two things we need to find one we need the row and two we need the column okay this this here is the row 
Okay, this here is a column. Now we're going to stay on the same column, so the column's easy as one. But we have to find that row. We have to find that row, and the row is simply this: locate Monday and then add one. Right? Locate Monday, add one. Okay, so that's all we have to do, and we've gone ahead and used that index throughout it. So I've just dragged and dropped that. Okay, so that's all we have to do for that. Okay, so it's very very powerful, and so let's go ahead and set this back to Sunday. It's what I'm used to. And you'll see I've already set the calendar to refresh automatically. Okay, so now we know how we get all the days of the week dynamically. Okay, and so what we need to do then is let's go ahead and go over the formulas to get the calendar. Okay, okay, so basically now I, we remember we discussed how we named these ranges. But I've also named the individual field here. This field is called start time. Okay, so that means when I type in nine o'clock, equals start time. Okay, I like that. It's not necessary. We could simply, we could easily do equals this. Okay, but we've named the range because it's nice to see that. I like, I like to see names in my formulas because they really help me define. When formulas get complex, right? When you see those names inside, it's really easy to understand what's going on. So I always urge you to name your fields, even if it's just one field or one cell. Sometimes it really, if you know it's going to be used in a formula or in VBA, let's go ahead and name that. Okay, it's really helpful moving forward. Okay, so back to this formula. Okay, so what we've done is I've said um, if the weekday, okay, and now I want to know also one more thing. We have to know what weekday this is, okay? That means basically what I want to say is if the first sun, if the first day of the month, if the first day of the month lands on a Sunday, then put that here. If it's not, leave it blank. So that's what we want to find out. If the first day of the month lands on a Sunday, then put the date here. If it's not, leave it blank. Okay, so that's the idea. Now the problem is that the complexity is this is not always Sunday, right? Because this could be whatever they set here. Okay, so the reason is what we have to do is I have to say if, and basically what I've done is just put a formula down here that says this is the first day of the week. So I've used this formula a little bit of a helper side. It's not it's not necessary. We could we could actually put this directly in the formula, but I wanted to separate them to show you. So what I've said is D4, D4, right? What is this? This is the first day of the week. Okay. Remember, when we use the match weekdays, okay, this is our first day. There's a few different ways to do that, but we know this is number one. Okay. Two, three. So we've gone ahead and run this formula, and this helps us out. So remember, D42 is the day of the week, and this will change, right? If we change this, if we change this to Wednesday, you'll see the numbers down here change: four, five, six, seven, and then it goes back one, two, three. So you see these numbers change based on the day of the week, and that's going to help us moving forward. Okay. So let's go ahead and set that back to Sunday. Let's go ahead and increase this column a little bit. By double clicking back to Sunday we go. All right, so let's go ahead and start out. So basically, what I'm going to say here is we're saying if this date, now the date is the scheduled year, the selected month. Now the selected month is one B4. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that. B4 selected month. We've put that month in here. Now when that month changes, this this will change. Okay, to if it's two. If it's February, it's going to be two. March is going to be three, etc. Okay, so if the date, the scheduled year, the selected month, and the first day of the week, right? If that equals, if the weekday, the weekday, right, the weekday of this date equals D42 equals this number down here. Remember, then put in the date. Then put in that date. Okay then the date is the first day of the year. If it's not on a Sunday, then leave it blank or not on that, okay? So I've done the same thing over, except I've added something before. If this is the first day of the week, we don't need to test anymore. We don't need to test this condition. So if this is not blank, then all we need to do is add one. So here, if D5 is not blank, then, it's, then we know, then we know what the next day is. It's gonna be D5 plus one, okay? If it's if it is blank, then we also have to test is the first day of the month landing on a Monday. So 
is the first day of the month equal to E42? In this case, right, remember, if it's 2, if it's 2, if the, in this case, in January, it is, right? So it is. So that's, in this case, it does land on a first, okay? So that's a really, really important fact that we want to make sure that uh, we, we use. So, so then all we've done is on this first row, we've just run the same formula over and over again, okay? So it's the same formula. And then it's easy after that point. All it is is this day plus 1, this plus 1 this plus one okay so we just go through now towards the end of the calendar on the last two rows it gets a little bit more complex again because what I want to do is I want to find out is basically is what I'm saying is if this day plus one if the month of this day right now we know our selected month is, is one right our selected month number is one so what I want to do is I want to test a condition and I'm gonna say if this if this date, remember these are dates. Let me just show this to you again because I'm sorry, it might be a little bit confusing. Let's go into home and then this is a custom format, okay? This is a custom format. So in actuality, if we if we show you the normal format, it's gonna show up as date. You see those are all dates, right? However, I'm only showing the day, okay? However, it's a custom format. So if we go back into manage formats and I'm only showing the day. Okay, I'm only showing the day, D, that's it, okay? And that's just gonna show the day. So by doing that, it only shows the day. We don't need the month. You could, if you, some people like to show a month. You know, you could, you could on your calendar, you can change that. Maybe you wanna show a month. Maybe you want to show them like a three digit month. You could go D dash M, D dash M, M, M. That would show, it would look like this, first of January, you see? Some people prefer that. You could do that as well if you like. So that's why only numbers show, but in actuality, these are all dates, okay? Just so you know, they're, they're all dates, but they're shown, but only the day is being shown, okay? So that's an important understanding as we move forward. So back into this, so we're saying is if this date plus one, if the month of that is not equal, right, is not equal to the selected month, then blank. That means it's a new month. For example, this formula here, there is no there is no 32nd of January, right? Right? There is none. So we're saying is if if the month of G29 plus 1, G29 plus 1, right? In this case it would be February 2nd. G29 plus 1 is February 2nd. So that means it's not the selected month, right? G29 the month of G29 plus 1 is 2. The month of G29 plus 1 is 2. It's February, right? So that's not equal to the selected month. So in this case, it's blank, okay? So in this case, it's blank. And basically, once we know this cell is blank, then we can test every cell after that. All we need to say is, if this previous cell is blank, then make this one. If the previous cell is blank, then make this one blank. So then we move forward throughout, okay? So that's how we do our calendar. And we also have conditional formatting, as you've seen. I've gone ahead and colored the current day um, the current day orange as you can see and that's done through conditional formatting and let's go ahead and take a look at the formatting that we have we've got uh, on the headers on the headers we've got two different rules one gray if it's blank okay and um, this is really important because I don't want you to work too hard on how to create these okay so for for the today it was easy because there's no all I'm doing is testing for today so all I did was was highlight the whole the whole table and then I just added a rule you know conditional formatting a new rule and then I just put format cells that contain right and then I just uh, dates right and then today so that's all I did and then I formatted it so that was very simple because our I guess I guess if we put a date in here it would probably 122 Two zero one eight, right? Uh, no, it doesn't work because I have a pre. I have a, another format already. So I have the green format, which takes precedence, is on the selected cell, and I'll show you how that works. So basically, all we've done. But now for this, I've done two different rules because I want to show for anything that doesn't have a date, I want to gray it out. Okay, so I've used two different rules. One is on the headers, and so all I did was highlight 
right? Holding the control down, highlight all of the affected rows. Okay, now this is really important because I don't want you to have to create conditional formats for every single cell. So let's show you how to do them all in once. Control, remember I'm holding down the control now and I'm highlighting, oh, I messed it up. Okay, let's try that again. Holding down the control, okay, and we're going to highlight every row that contains a date, okay, and now all we have to do is go into Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, and we're going to use a we're going to use a formula, okay, and this is important. We have to make sure that the first cell that is the one that we're going to, which is D5, and um, when we change this to D5, we want to make sure that there's no dollar signs. We don't want an absolute cell because we want it to affect each one of them. Now keep in mind something strange is going to happen and I'll show you that. Okay, and what are we going to format? Let's just say, let's just format a green color because I, I want to show you something that's different. I want to show you how that works. Okay, and then D5 equals blank. Okay, now this D5 is going to change for some reason. I don't understand exactly why it will change. But, um, okay, now go back in there, conditional formatting manage rules and make sure that everything said oh so it looks good okay so d5 so you see we don't need two rules but I just wanted to show you how that's gonna work okay so d5 equals blank remember no absolute no dollar signs because we want it to affect only the individual cells so you see how that works okay and let's go ahead and back into here and let's go ahead and remove that rule we don't need that but I wanted to show you let's go ahead and delete that and so basically I now for this cell here, for these I did the same thing, right? Because I want I highlight using the control, highlight every row, and then in this case it's going to be D5 as well. But just make sure that it's not an absolute, no dollar signs. So that's how we create the conditional formatting. And now we did through some code. I want to know what the highlighted cell is. Okay, I created additional, right? If we click on a cell, I want that cell to turn green. Okay, how did we do that? All right, back into conditional formatting, manage rules, and you'll see this green here. And I've done the same thing D5 equals M3. M3. Okay, let's go ahead and close that out. Right, D5 equals M3. How did I do that? M3 is the date, the current date, right? So basically, it's saying if this date equals this date, then color this. And how did I do that? Same process. Highlighted all these cells, okay, just like this. Scroll down, holding the control, holding the control, okay, right, okay, conditional formatting, new rule, okay, use a formula uh, to determine that, yes, okay, select the first one, D5, and you can use F4, 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 that'll remove it, okay, that'll alternate between, just clicking F4 alternates until you find the one with D5, that's kind of a quick link using F4 format that all right let's make that red so we can see okay and and what do we want d5 equals okay d5 equals m what was it m4 okay and m3 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 will never change right because we that's always going to be that so that one cannot be, can be absolute and does contain the dollar signs before the m and before the 3 so that's very important okay and we click okay okay and oh, let me just fix that and so that is going and watch I want to show you something that happens tendency look at this you see that that happens a lot when the cell does not include it all we have to do that's very common because we just I don't know why but it happens all the time go back change that to five why does it change good question somebody must know somebody put in the comments why that changes it always changes back okay apply and it changes okay all we have to do is the reason it changes the reason it changed here not here is because you see d5 was located in that d5 was located in that so it does change but you might want to change it back when it's not absolute it tends to to change with the cells or it adds them up something some reason just just make sure you know it's normal if, if for some reason it doesn't work go back and change that back to the way it was and everything will work out we can delete that rule for now so let's go ahead and delete that so we've shown you all the conditional formatting that works uh, within this calendar here we do have one additional conditional formatting and that's simple and all I've done is I've if this I've added a conditional format if there's any value in here uh, use this faded green okay so that way I've got that conditional formatting 
And there's no VBA that, that is used in this conditional format banding, so it's really simple. All right, so let's get into the nuts of this and see exactly how this is working under the hood so we can go and see how did we create this calendar. All right, into the VBA model we go and uh, you can click on the file if you don't have VBA options to get to that developers tab, customize the ribbon and click here for the developers tab if you do not have it visible. You can go in here in the developers tab, click Visual Basic or Alt F11 will also get you there. And let's go ahead and see what we have under here. We've got a little bit of coding on the sheet itself and we have some macros that help us work. Not too many and I'm going to walk you through those so don't worry too much. All right. So we have a few macros. Our first macro is when I click on a selected cell, I want a few things to happen, right? I want that day to load. I want all the schedules to load, okay? And now remember, Excel only holds a value, so the actuality is the data, the scheduled appointments are not being held in here. They're being held somewhere else. As soon as we click on that, and where are they being held? Well, they're being held here in this database, right in here. And I've and I and we have a new one for each year. But I'm going to show you how we program that in automatically to create it. Now, watch. Let's go ahead and create an appointment for 2019. All right, change the date on that, and then watch the magic happen. Now we have a database for 2019, just like that. Nothing else to do. I can delete that now, okay? And I'll, I'll show you how that was done, okay? So now we can see how that's done. Go back to 2018, and I'll walk you through that, how we did that as well, all right? And uh, let's go ahead and delete that now. We can recreate it in a three seconds, so no problem. We don't need it right at the moment. And so basically the idea is very simple okay and it can get a lot more complex all I did was create one column for each day okay and that column includes all the details and the idea is simple as soon as as soon as we schedule an appointment Fred on the 11th right that gets copied over here right here you see how it got copied over here let's do that again okay right under Fred David okay Boom. There it is right there, David. Okay, so the idea is to bring it here and, and I'll show you a way to hide these. You may not, you probably don't need to see these, so we can hide those automatically too. But for our purposes, I want to show you what's going on. So I'm going to keep them visible for you for now. Okay, so the idea is as soon as we schedule, we want that data to transfer to the right day here so that we can recall it. Now, how do we do that? All right, let's go back into the VBA and show you how we do that. All right. So the idea is, and remember, we're gonna we're gonna focus right now on worksheet change. That means when we make an actual change to the worksheet, we want something to happen. Okay. Now, when we make a change to M4 through M40, M4 through M40, that is the day view schedule. Okay. Remember, that's here. That's M4 through M40. We're saying to it, we're telling Excel when we make a change, we want something to happen. Well, what do we want to happen? Well, the first thing is we want to do is we want to know where do we put this data. We know we have to put the data on another sheet, but what sheet and where? What sheet and where? So we need to get that information. Okay. To do that, we need to define something. And I've and I've dimensioned uh, column and sheet here. Sheet is going to be our sheet name. In this case, it's 2018. And the column. We need to know what column. Where are we going to put that? Okay. So we need that two information. We need. That, that information we need to know what sheet and what column and the row we can figure out automatically okay the row is simple the first row in this is two the first row in this is four so all we need to do is make sure if this is four right we need to make sure that that goes into row two here okay so that's a very simple that, that part is simple okay so let's go ahead so we need the sheet we need the row and we need the column Okay, those three things are the important information. Okay, so the database column, we need to get that database column, and I've put it in M42. Okay, now how did we get that? Let's go look at that formula in M42. M42, okay, here is the column. Now how do we know, how do we know automatically 
that the 11th is on column 11. Now we could just extract the day out of that. That would be an easy way to do that. But I want to show you a little bit more in formulas. Yes, it's, it happens to be the day. So the day, but that doesn't work for, it works for January, but it doesn't work for month. But we need the more, more scientific just to go by the day and the month. So what we want to do is I want to match, okay? So we can use our favorite indirect match, okay? Indirect, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use indirect. We know the sheet name. Remember, the sheet name is what? Scheduled year, right? We're always going to name the sheets the year. So that's how we can easily know what sheet. Okay, so we know what sheet. And we always know, we always know the range. The range is always going to be A1 through NB1, always. Okay, A1, right, shift, control, right arrow to NB. Now, why NB, right? Look, NB is empty, but it's not. Remember, leap year, right? If it's a leap year, we need, to, we need to have that extra day available for us. For example, if we go back A1, change this to year 2020, which is a leap year, right? When we go back again, control shift, right arrow, and let's go ahead and maximize that. You'll see now NB is full because uh, that 2020 is a leap year. So we do have to account for that. And we can do that very simply. All we need to do is uh, simply the, the way we did the month. We can say if the year of NA plus 1 is the same year, if the year of NA plus 1 is the same year as NA1, okay, the year of NA1, then NA plus. So we're, basically what we're saying is if, if this and this date have the same years, then display it. Otherwise, leave it blank. Okay, let's go ahead and change this back to 2018 before we mess up things. But I wanted to show you how we can account for leap year. Okay, so that's very important. So we always, so we always want to account for that extra day every four years. Okay, back into the formula we go. Now, so we've we know our range. Okay, so we know the range. So what we're going to say is that we need to match M3. We need to find M3. M3 is our date. M3, right? Where is this date in this range? What column match M3, indirect, and this, we need an exact match. Right here, it means an exact match. The match type is exact, OK? And if for some, the reason I've also wrapped this in an if error, if there's an error, if there's an error, I want to blink. Why would there be an error? Well, there's an error if we choose a year. If we choose a year that we don't have just yet, this will end up being blank, and that tells us it's, we need to create a year. So that's going to be helpful saying, okay, if the user's choosing a year that there's no database for, leave it blank and then we'll go ahead and create the year. Okay, so that is how we get the column. So we know the column, the right column to put it in is, uh, is 11 in this case. Okay, so back into the VBA, we know the database column is in M42, we know the sheet is in P7. Another way to do it, um, we can choose, now we know that we know that uh, database sheet, let me show you another way to do that. P7 is it, but you can also use, um, since we've defined P7, P7 as the schedule year, SC year, another way to write this code also accurately is simply to just do SC year. This works also, okay? That works just fine too. So you don't have to worry about that. That's, a, that's another way to do it. Okay. Fred, okay. And so back into, so you see that works just fine too. So that's also helpful. That's why I really like to use those name ranges. Um, because uh, if you've named a range, it's nice. You can see exactly what's going on here. You may want to use the actual cell. You may want to use the name ranged. You can use both. Okay. So we've got the column. We've got the sheet. Now we also know the row. The row is the target row. That means the row that we just made the change minus two. So we know the row, we know the sheet, and we know the column. Okay, so now database sheet. Now the reason there's a double quote here and there's a double quote here. Sometimes Excel will not accept. They'll think, the, because we've used the sheet as a number, and this is important, if your sheet names are numbers, if then it's really good to wrap it in a double quote. This forces Excel to see it as a text. Even though we've defined it as a string, sometimes, not every time, sometimes Excel will throw an error. But when we use this, 
when we use the double quotes and the database sheet and double quotes, it won't neither of it, it forces it to look at it as a string. And we need to make sure that the sheet sheets string, in this case 218, cells. Why are we using cells and not range? We're using cells and not range because both the row and the column are numbers. When the row and the column, uh, especially the column, the row is always a number. When the column is a number, then we use cells. Okay. If we know the column, if we know the column is A or B or C, then we can use range. Okay. But in this case, both of them are, are numbers, so we want to use cells. And all equals the target value. It's one simple code. You see, we know the sheet, okay? We know the row and we know the column. Okay, equals target value. And then this little bit of code, and I'll show you this in a moment. What this this is the this is a macro, and this adds the summary. And I'll show you why we need to do that. When we make a change, when I make a change, let's go ahead and choose an empty day. When I make a change, David, David's okay I want that change to show up on the day right away so that and if I make another change I want that change to show up also on the day so that macro and I'll walk you through that in a moment will add that summary to the current day so that's really helpful that way changes you make show up right away okay so back into the code we go okay so we have another one if there's a change to anything on P4 to P7 then load the month and basically what what I want to do is I'm saying if there's any change here we better reload that month okay reloading the month what does it do it clears everything out and it loads all of the data for that month one more time okay so if we change this to Monday right we got to make sure we clear everything out right and load it again because we need to make sure that you know it's going to change everything okay so now that's important so all we've done is uh, let's go back to Sunday so that just reloads the data and I'll walk you through how that works very shortly okay so that's an important step also we want to reload that month alright next up we have some code on selection change and remember selection changes simply when we select a cell we want things to happen we don't even need to make a change when we select a cell just a selection we want things to happen and in this case when I select a cell here, I want to load the schedule. So when I select anything from D6 through J11 and also D12 through J16, etc., etc., I want to load the day. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. So here, this, this bit of code really helps us. In this case, if the target count is greater than 6, and you'll often see in my code, I'll put this at 1, but in this case, because uh, we're selecting multiple cells in this case, right? Look, we're selecting five different cells, right? Five different ones. So if I make the, and the reason I put this code in is when we select this, if I don't have that code in there, it's going to cause a bug. Let me show you what that, what I mean by that. Okay. If I comment this out, okay. If I comment this out, and then I go ahead and select. If I do that again, it's going to throw a bug. You see? So that's you're gonna find that a lot when you're doing code and uh, so it's important that we say hey if it's more than six exit the sub okay so that's why I have that in there so that's important it says if the user selects more than six then please um, go ahead and exit the sub all right so if this is uh, basically we're saying if the user selects any of these cells D6 through J10 D12 through J16 etc etc is nothing then we do some things we have, we're gonna do three things okay first of all what I want to do is says if the target offset value goes empty and let me show you what this line is okay we know that the target is this right but offset means something around the target offset right if we do offset column minus one it's going to be this if we do offset row minus one it's going to be this if we do offset row plus one it's going to be this and if we do offset column plus one it's going to be this so offset helps us identify specific cells around the cell you've selected and what i want to do is i'm going to say is if we've selected a cell in which the one in which the cell above is blank 
right? If the cell above, above, above is the keyword, is blank, don't do anything, okay? I don't want to load a blank day, right? I only want to load the actual days, okay? So let's go ahead and say, so how did I code that in? So it says, if the target offset, and remember, the first the first is row, offset row, and then column, okay? Column, we're going to keep the same column, so that's zero. There's no offset. So if the offset, that means the row above, the value of that, if the target, the value right above, is does not equal empty, then do something, okay? If it, so nothing's going to happen. Nothing is going to happen if um, it's not, if it's empty, okay? Then, then, um, Basically, if it's not empty, then we, what we want to do is we want to uh, put that day, we want to take the day and put it in there, okay? So basically what I'm saying is, let me go ahead and go through that again for you. If, if this is not empty, then take this day here and put it here. Remember, this is the day, right? This is an actual date, so we can put it here. They're just formatted differently, here and here, they're just formatted differently. Okay, so it says M3 equals whatever this value is. Okay, so that's how I've done that. Equals target offset one row up, right? If we're going to do target value, that would just be the actual cell we selected. We don't want that. I want to say the cell above, the cell right above, right above, put it there. So that's how we've done that, okay? And then we're going to say load day, and I'll go over that macro with you. And basically that macro is going to take all of the information and load it here. Okay, it's actually going to take it's going to take all of this information, right? And simply copy it here. That's all it's going to do. It's very simple, right? So, we know what load day is and I'll go over that. And then another thing is B7 equals the target address, okay? And I'll show you why I've done that. What I want to know is I want to know, I want to put here what cell I've done, okay? And this is going to help us when we load the summary, we need to know what cell to put it in, okay? So basically, I have to know what cell we just selected. So I want to put that here, right? B7 equals the address. You see a E18? So it just puts the address right in there because that's going to help us. Because when we add, when we add an appointment, let's go ahead and click here. When we add an appointment, I need to know what cell to put this back in. I need to know what cell to put the summary back in. So this address is going to help us know what cell that was in. All right. So that's it for the on sheet macros on our sheet. Okay. Now we have the macros for the sheets add. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over those. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and show you how we have done the macros on this. And a lot of these macros use the same variable. So I've dimensioned them at the top here. We have the sheet name, and I have a schedule summary, which we're going to use for the text of the schedule summary as strings. Last row of the schedule row, scheduled column, and we have the starting column and end column. That's going to help us, and I'll show you why. We'll use that uh, when loading the month. And the database column. Okay, so uh, the first thing is, remember when I spoke of when, when we... Uh, when a user is going to use a year and they've selected a new year that, that's not currently in the database, and remember, each year is stored, we want to create that database right away, okay? And a macro does that, you see? It just happened right there, and it's very fast. So how do we create that? Well, this uh, particular macro does that for us. And uh, first, all we need to do is first we need to define the sheet name, right? And remember, the sheet name is going to be, here we've used the named range, remember that? P7, okay, here, remember that back on the schedule, our sheet name is here, schedule year, P7, okay, so we've defined that, so we know what we're going to name the new sheet, we know the name, and all we have to do is click sheets, add, that adds a new sheet, and then it automatically activates that new sheet, so it's automatically the active sheet, and then we're just going to change the name of that sheet to the sheet name. Okay, so that's simple. And now our fixed copy. Make sure in your code, don't remove the 2018 <laughs> because I'm using that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to copy 2018. Okay, so you don't want to remove that one. You can remove anywhere else. So basically, I said, okay, I'll copy everything from just the top row of 2018 and paste that into our new row 
in our new sheet. Okay, so basically all we're doing, and let's go over that, all we're going to do is take everything in the new column. All we're going to do is take that and A1 through NB1, copy that, right? Copy that, copy, right? Go ahead in here, right? Paste it, paste all, right? Right click, paste all, okay? Paste everything. And then I want the code to take this and just put in one, one, two, zero, two, zero, okay? That's all the code is doing, okay? So just as I did it manually there. So then we're gonna see A1, the new sheet A1 equals one, one, and the sheet name, that's it. Because every other date is based on a formula. Every other date, right, equals A1 plus one, equals A, right? Everything else is based on a formula. So as soon as we change that year, everything else changes, okay? You see, everything else changes. So it's really simple. Uh, it's really simple to track down. I've done a lot of scheduling, and so I've really simplified this to just make it so it's easy for you, okay? And then um, we're gonna just clear that cut, copy most. You know how when, um, when you copy and paste something, right? Copy, right, paste, and paste. Right, you still have those dancing ants around, right? Cut uh, application, cut copy mode equals false gets rid of that, okay? Just like double clicking, it gets rid of that. So that's why we have that line of code. Application, cut copy mode false, it gets rid of those. And I've included a line, but I've commented it out. You probably want to hide it. Once we create it, you might want to hide it. There's no, there's no need for this to be visible. So this, when you comment this out, simply remove that first character right comment out it'll automatically hide that sheet okay because you may not want to see it and then it's going to go ahead and activate back we want to activate the schedule back again okay so we want to activate that so that that line of code does that so that's how we add a new sheet it's quite simple okay next is we want to add the summary and what is add the summary again okay what we want to do is basically what I want to do is I want to for every day I want to create a summary Okay, let's go ahead and back to 2018, uh, where we have data, okay? And so I want to create a summary, and I want to put that summary in the cell here, okay? And if I make a change, I want that summary to update, okay? So this is the summary, okay? And so I want to create a text of that, okay? So how do we go ahead and do that? Well, the idea is basically what, what we're going to do is... I want to take everything, every appointment in here, and I want to create a single text field. And I'm going to put that right down here. I'm just going to store it right down here. I'm going to use row 40 because I know that row 40 um, is not part of the schedule. I think the scheduling stops at around 38, right? Because on our schedule, we only have a total of, we only have a total of 37 rows. So if we go down to 37, right it's going to stop at row 38 so i can use this row it's not going to it's not going to be uh, used so we can use row 40 so i've elected to use row 40 to store our summary okay and i want to make sure okay let's take a look at let's pick a day on the 8th okay there's nothing here okay nothing here in row 40 and let's go back to the schedule and click on the 8th here okay the eight where there's nothing and I want to add some appointments and what I want to do is basically I want to include uh, some data here and then I want you so you see how that summary and if we look back here back on the eighth right so we have the three appointments and now we have a summary the idea is I want to take each appointment I want to take what time, we know what time, and I want to add it. I want to add the time, and then I want to add the name. Then I want to go to the next row. And I want to do that for every row that has data, okay? So that's the idea. So now we're going to show you how we did that in VBA, okay? We've defined the sheet name, as always. We know the schedule column, M42, we went over that. And, and then a uh, schedule summary, I'm just gonna ensure that it starts out, when it starts out, it's empty, okay? You generally don't have to do that, but since we've defined it up here, it's important to clear it out. Um, but if, if we if we dim, dim uh, schedule summary here, then it's not necessarily, 
okay? But we've done it up there because I've used it in multiple, I may use it in multiple macros, and then you want to make sure it's empty, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to define the last row, okay? The last row of data up until 41. So basically what that is, is I want to know the last row. I don't want to go through every single row until the end, right? I want to only go through the last row. If the last row of data is 14, I don't want to go beyond that. So I want to know the last row. I want to make it as fast as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and update that so that we can know the last row. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, let's go ahead and show you how that's done in the variable. So first of all, we've said M41. That means everything above this, I want to know what the last row is. Okay, everything above the f then what is the last row of data? For example, in this case, it's 14, right? Starting here, starting here, what is the last row? Okay, because there's data here, right? There's data here, so I don't want I don't want this. If I choose if I choose a row after, it's always going to say 42, and I, I don't want that. So we start here. From here, what is the last row? Okay, in this case, it's 14. So last row is 14. So now we're going to say from 4 to 14. From 4 to 14. From 4 to 14. In this case, 14, right? I want to. What I want to do is I want to get the. I want to first find every row with data. If there's something here, get the time, get the information, and move on. And then go to the next row. Get the date, get the time, get the information, and go to the next row. So we're going to create a loop to do that. Okay, from schedule row from four to the last row, uh, it's the schedule summary equals the schedule summary. The reason we do that is because we want to keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it, right? And what we're going to say is if the M is not empty, if this M and the schedule row value is not empty, right? If there's actual data, then do this. Then one, add the time. And here's the time. The time's in L. Okay? The time is in L. But when you know times are just times are just values, they're numbers. But we have to format that into something we want to see, right? Times are just numbers, but we need to format that. So we've wrapped that in a format, right? I've wrapped it in a format. And let's say, and let's take a look at this. So I've done AM, PM, but let's say you wanted military time, right? Just clear that out, clear that A, PM, right? And now watch when we double click Lisa, right? And then it goes to, where is it? What are we on the 8th? Oh, okay. Let's do it. Let's choose a day we can see from here. Okay, let's go ahead and put in, um, choose a day. There we go. There we go. Let's double click on that. Okay, so basically it updated it to 1300, right? Try it again. 1500. Okay, but now watch. When I change that back to AM, PM, when I change that back, Control Z, Control Z, when I change that back to AM, PM, now let's now just double click on it. It'll update it. So now it's updated, right? So that format's going to change. So you should use whatever time format you you're comfortable with, or whatever your users like. Okay, feel free to change this to whatever format. So it's going to wrap. It's going to wrap this value in a format. And I want to put a colon and a space, right? A colon and a space, and then the appointment. And then this is a new line. This sends it to a new line. Okay, so. That means that I want a colon, a colon, and a space, and the name, and then a new line. So I want to do that for every appointment, right? And if there's a lot, you see, look, this one has a lot of appointments, right? So it's all there. Some of it's just hidden. We can only accommodate, you know, five. In your schedule, you can accommodate more. If you want to make your calendar eight, ten lines, go for it. You know, all the same principles apply. For our purposes, we have a small screen. Let's just you know, continue, but everything's going to be here, all appointments, even though they may not be displayed. All right, so let's continue on. So we've gone through that loop and we created this, all of this. And then once we do that, what I want to do is I want to take this text, which is all the information, and I want to put it on the 40th row of our current column, on the 40th row, okay? I want to put it right here. 40, I want to put it right here row 40 okay I want to put it that's why everything's there and it doesn't really matter what it looks like here it doesn't matter if it's not formatted this is our database so we don't we don't care too much about what it looks like there that's why there's no formatting at all and there doesn't need to be so 
we've put that on there, right? And I also want to say, okay, look, now here's, but now, now that we have it here, but we also need to get it on our schedule, right? We need to get it here, right? But how do we know what cell to put it in? How do we know this is the one? Remember, when you select a cell, I've taken the address and put it in B7. Remember that? B7. Now we know what cell to add that summary to, don't we? Right? B7 is where we're going to put it. So we say the range of B7, right? B7 is the cell address. We know where to put it now equals schedule summary. So that has how we know where to put it. So that's how that works. All right? Great. So let's move on to the next macro. All right, you still with me? Stay awake. Don't fall asleep. All right? Let's continue on. I'll know if you're sleeping. <laughs> let's go on to loading month. Now, what we want to make sure is when we load a month, we want to make sure that everything gets cleared out first before we load new data. We also need to know where does the month start? You know, in January it's easy, but where does February start? Where here's May. What column does May start? Well, May starts on May starts on DQ. What column is that? Equal column. Let's take a look. Equal column. May starts on column 121. Where does it end, right? Well, it ends on May 31st, right? Equals column, right? So I need to know on one it starts right I need to know where it starts and where it ends right 121 to 151 so I need those two numbers those are important for me right so because I need to have that macro start at this column get all the summaries get all the data in row 40 and put it on the calendar okay so those two numbers are critical we need to find the starting row and so we've used that in the formula right so when we click let's go ahead and I'll show you how that macro works March, April, May. Okay, remember 121, 151. We need to get those numbers. We can do that with a formula. Okay, how do we get those those column numbers? The beginning and ending column number. That's very critical. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and uh, show you how we've done that. And basically, all I've done is a match. We need to find. Okay, the month number, we know the month number, selected five. And when we go previous month, I'll show you the macro that puts that number here, All right? So we need to find the month number. We know, we know the sheet, the scheduled year. We know the month, the month is here. And we know one, it's the first day, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a match. I wanna match that first day and I'm gonna use indirect. So it says, where is this, what column is it in this, indirect the scheduled year where is it so all we're going to do is use match to find that column number okay match is going to help us out and so we've used match to help us determine exactly what column and we've also used match and in math and in math we've taken the same month but this this end of month this gives us the day this gives us the last day of this month, the year, the month, and one. This will tell us what the last date is. So it's going to say, okay, match that last column, okay? And that's really, really important. All right. So we know, and it's going to say, match it where? Match it in this. In this, this is the um, this is the value that we're matching. This is the value, and this is the range. What is the range? Well, it's the year because that's the sheet A1 through BN. So we know where we're going to find it. So that formula helps us determine the, la the column of the last day of the year. So now that we have the starting column and we have the ending column, we can run from one column to the next and get all the data we need to fill up this calendar. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through that in, in uh, the VBA. So first of all, we're going to check. We want to make sure that for some reason that if B5 is 0, we need to add a new sheet. Now, why would we want to do that? B5, if it's not found, what if it's not, if there's an error, if there's an error, for example, let me show you what happens, okay? We're on schedule 2018, okay? And look, there's no 2019, we have none, but if we continue down, right, if we continue, let's click here, let's go ahead, click here, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, okay, we're on the last month, 
of 2018, right? If we click the next month, it's going to be 2019, but we don't have a schedule for 2019, but I want to create one, okay? So that means it's going to say it's not, if we click again, right, it's not going to find it. You see how quick that was? Okay, but basically now it's there. You see? Now it's there. So what I did was, that's, here's what I did. I said, hey, if there's an error here, if this is not found, if there's an error, that means the the column wasn't found. If there's an error, I want you to create the sheet and then go back. So that's all we did here. It says, so if B5 value is blank, then add the new sheet. Okay. Let's go ahead and back in there. Then add new sheet. We already went over that macro here. Okay. So that that's just to check. Okay. If we still need, if we need to add that database, let's go ahead and add it in. Now it's been added. Sheet name equals the schedule year. We know about that. Database column. In this case, the, we want the first column. Okay, the first column, B5 value. Remember? Let's go ahead and show that. B5 is the first column. B6 is the last column. Okay. Let's go back to our May so we can see that. All right. A little bit slow. There's ways we can make this faster, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty good. And, um, all right, so here we are, 121 and 151. That is our May, okay? And this line is going to clear out any any values in the calendar, okay? We, we didn't clear out the whole. We want to make sure we don't clear out the, the day. So it's gonna basically going to take any of these and clear any data that's in these cells. And it's going to clear those out. So that's what that does. And then we're going to say for the scheduled row, 6 to 36, step 6. So we're going to have two loops here two loops okay so and I'll show you why we need two loops first I want to go column I want to I want to, on this row right on this row here I want to go one two three four five six seven okay then I'm gonna go one two three four five six seven so the first loop is to from this row stay on the first row and then go one two seven columns and then on the second row also again so that's two loops okay so we're gonna go through two loops the first is um, actually so the first loop is the row six is the first row okay then we're going to go columns four to eleven why four to eleven what is that you ask okay let me show you what that is column number okay four to eleven column equals column column let's type that in correctly okay column four right to column eleven so we're going to go from four to eleven okay 4 to 11. Actually, it should be 4 to 10. Let me change that. 4 to 10. Okay. Um, 4 to 10. So we're going to go through all of those seven. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to say basically, if the cells of selected minus one value equals empty, then go to no. So basically what we're saying is that in this case, if this is empty, right, if this is empty, schedule column minus one right then don't worry so basically I want to skip any time this is empty I want to skip it I don't even want to bother with it okay I'm only focused on the days of that month okay so if the schedule the schedule row minus one that means the row above equals empty then go to next column I'm just gonna skip that okay otherwise the cells of the scheduled row in the scheduled column right value equals sheets right Remember, it's always on row, the summary is always going to be on row 40 and the database column. So we're going to loop through that. Basically, all we're going to be doing is we're going to go, go through each, we're going to go through each summary column, right, on 40, each one, and add the summary, add the summary, add the summary, add the summary, add the summary. So all we're going to do is adding, adding that to every day, okay? So that's how, that's how that works, right? And it goes through these two loops. And uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit easier for you to see how that there's two loops. And uh, okay, that looks good. Okay, so it runs through these. And basically what we're going to be doing is the reason we've added database column is I want to make sure that we're starting out with the first column. We really don't need the last column too bad, but it's okay. Um, it starts out of the first column, but I want to make sure that each time we add a day, we go to the next database column, right? Each time we add a day, one column, we need to go to the next one. And then so we add one database so that it keeps up. Okay. 
and that's how we handle that so that's how we load the month okay and now how do we load the day okay remember when we select on a month remember we have a macro called load day right when we select let's go back to January uh, we have some data in there okay when we select on a day we want to load that details here right when we select it we want to load it so let's go ahead and see how we did on that macro loading a day now the reason we did this remember there's an important thing um, when we remember when we make a change here right Fred we want that change to be saved right but also when we load a day there's also changes here right right every time we but, but what we we do is we say we only want to save those changes we only want to save those changes when we're actually making this kind of a change not this kind of a change okay so what we're saying is when we're loading a day don't save to the database because it's already in the database you understand so the reason is when we load a day we mark b2 as true and then when we're finished loading it we mark b2 as false and the reason for that is when we when we use this macro right remember this is the macro on sheet where we actually save the information to the database right so there's a check in here it says only do this if b2 is false okay that means don't do anything about saving to the database when we're loading the day okay that's just ignore it. when we're loading the day ignore these changes okay so that's why we have that line of code in there that's very important otherwise things go a little bit crazy all right so that's why we set this to false so loading the day we're simply finding the schedule sheet right the schedule column we know the schedule column right we know the sheet name here the column we know the column so all we're doing is we're going to clear the current day in case there's any values we want to make sure that we that we clear this day we want to clear that okay that's important so that we're ready and then we're going to basically all we're doing is we're going to find we're going to find let's go ahead and go over that again we're going to find the column okay and then we're going to copy this we're going to go this copy and then paste the values we don't want to paste formats so just values and that's also we can use that as a direct instead of copy and paste it's copy and paste it's faster if we do value to value m40 value equals the range of the sheet name okay the range because we're going right sheet name we know cells we're starting at row 2 going to row 38 okay and this is you'll notice this is 36 rows okay and this is 36 rows when we're going value to value we need to make sure it's exactly the same number of rows and columns okay that's very important otherwise it'll give us some kind of errors okay 36 rows one column 36 right from column 2 to column 38 I'm sorry from row 2 to row 38 okay also also 36 rows on the single column okay so all we're doing with that line of code is we're just saying we're saying here everything from 4 to 40 4 to 40 is equal to everything from 2 to 36 okay that's all we're saying so that's what we're saying that's exactly what that line of code does it basically takes all those values and puts it right in here so that is how we use that for the code okay next we only have the last two macros which are previous month and next month okay I've created two shapes on the sheets as you can see right next month and these are just simply arrows that we've created from shapes and then I've assigned macros to those okay previous and I've assigned those two macros and let me go ahead and show you how those uh, macros work in the VBA model here and in previous month what I'm gonna say is when we're going back and you remember B4 holds our month number okay B4 holds our month number which is here okay B4 is here so this holds our number and basically what I want to say is if this is one if we're in January and we go previous one we need to make this 12 right we need to make this 12 and we also need to change the year we gotta go back one year right so when we go previous month one boom this goes to 12 okay this goes to 2017 and if for some reason we have not had a 2017 database yet we need to create that too 
Okay, so let's go ahead and show how the how that's done. Load month. Okay, so it says if b4 equals one, then b4 equals twelve, and p7 equals p7 minus one. It means that this reduces the year. If it's not one, then all we need to do is reduce the month from one. And load month, and you'll see load month also inside the load month we check, right? Remember we check. You see we just went to 2017, right? But there was no month. So in that we were able to add the new sheet in that macro, all right? And so that's all that macro does, okay? Because everything is based on that month number. Next month the same thing. If it's 12, right, if the current month is 12, then make the next month 1 and then also add a year, add a year, right? So that means when we go back into the schedule, right, and we're on December and we click and our month number is 12, we want a 1, change this to 1, and 2, change this to one more year, okay? So that's how we do that on that. So that's very, very simple. And then also each macro, we want to make sure we load the month, okay? Remember the macro, clear out? We just went over that macro. So that is exactly how that's done. And that's how you create an extremely powerful and easy to use schedule for everybody um, with the power of Excel. And uh, I hope you liked this training. Sorry, it's a little bit longer than most, but we had a lot to cover here. So I'm really glad you stayed with me the whole time. Please comment before below uh, whether this is on YouTube or Facebook also please do share it I always appreciate that and thank you so much for joining me have a great day